In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about errors that can be made when testing a hypothesis. So when testing a hypothesis, in the end, we're going to decide to either reject our null or we're going to fail to reject our null. And in either case, we may be wrong. We'll never know if we actually made an error, but we can know how likely we are to make certain types of errors. So let's talk a little bit about the types of errors that might be made. So the first one, which we label a type 1 error, is where we reject our null hypothesis when in fact, in reality, the null is true and we shouldn't have rejected the null. The second type of error, we call a type 2 error, this is where we fail to reject the null, okay, we don't reject our null, when in fact, in reality, the null is false or the alternative is true. So again, we should have rejected the null. So type 1 and type 2 errors are the sort of generic names that get attached to them. A type 1 error also often gets called a false positive. And to work out the prob probability of making a type 1 error, we want to work out what's the probability of rejecting our null hypothesis when, in reality, the null is true. Okay. And this probability, we're going to label with alpha. Okay, so sometimes people might refer to this as an alpha error as well. Okay. A type 2 error also gets known as a false negative. Okay, and again here, this we'd like to work out what's the probability of failing to reject our null hypothesis when in fact, in reality, in reality, the null is false. Okay. Or you can think of it as the alternative is true. Okay. And again, this one we're going to label with beta. Okay. And sometimes people might refer to it as a beta error. So in this video, we're going to talk specifically about type 1 and type 2 errors, what they are in concept and in context. Okay. In a separate video, we're going to work numerically with them and actually work out what is the probability of making a type 1 or type 2 error and focus on the calculations a bit separately. So in order to think our way through these, let's take a look at a few um, examples. So the first one I'm going to bring up is the example of considering a court case okay, or a jury and the way these work. Okay, so in this example, our null hypothesis is going to be that the individual is not guilty and an alternative hypothesis that they're guilty. Okay, so again, we'd start this trial by assuming they're not guilty, okay, looking at the evidence and seeing if we can provide evidence against that, at which point we'll say we believe they're guilty. Okay, or the evidence may be too weak and we fail to reject the null and we find them not guilty. In either of these cases, we may end up making an error. So let's think about what each of uh, these type 1 and type 2 errors would be in the context of this example. All right, so remember, type 1 error is when we reject our null, when in fact the null is true. Okay, in this context, we reject the null, we say they're guilty, when in fact they're not guilty. Okay, so this kind of error would result in an innocent person in jail being sent to jail or found guilty. Okay. A type 2 error, first we think of it generically, that's where we fail to reject the null. Okay. We don't rule this out, we don't find them guilty, we find them not guilty, when in fact the alternative is true, they were guilty. Okay. So this type of error in context means a guilty person is set free. Um, we can think our way through, let's think our way through one more example. Okay. Here, let's think about the idea of testing, say, a new drug. So, um, writing them in a simple form, our null hypothesis here is that the drug doesn't work. Okay, put it here. The drug doesn't work versus an alternative that the drug works. Okay, and we're kind of writing this loosely. Um, we're not defining exactly what do we mean by works or doesn't work. We would test some hypothesis probably about if there was a change in um, mean measurement of blood pressure or some blood level or something like that. Okay, but let's just keep it um, generic. Again here, a type 1 error, we reject the null, right? 
We say that the drug works when in fact the null is true, it doesn't. So this one here is where we say the drug works when it doesn't. Okay? In reality, it doesn't work, but we say it does and we approve it. A type 2 error, right again, this is failing to reject the null. We say we don't have evidence to believe the drug works. So we end up concluding that the drug does not work when it really does. Okay, so again, both of these errors are bad, right? Type 1 error, we're approving a drug that doesn't really work. Type 2 error, we have some drug that works, but we're not approving it. Okay, so both of these errors are bad. Which one would be considered more serious? Depends a little bit on the context. Um, and, you know, putting some drug on the market that doesn't actually work versus you know, taking some drug that is effective and not putting it on the market. Which one's a more serious error depends a bit on the context. Right? Again, sending an innocent person to jail versus setting a guilty person free. Ideally, we'd not want to make either of those errors. As a society, we've chosen that we'd rather set a few guilty people free and try and minimize the amount of innocent people who get sent to jail. So let's take a look at a um, table that's a bit handy for remembering some of these things as well as labeling a few more of the parts. So when testing a hypothesis, in the end, we're going to make a decision. We're either going to reject our null or fail to reject our null. Okay. And in reality, the null hypothesis is either true or it's not true and the alternative is true. Okay. We don't actually know the reality. If we did, we wouldn't be collecting data and running a hypothesis test. But let's talk our way through the um, errors we can make conceptually, and then we'll figure out how often we're going to make each of these errors. So let's start with this here. And this table is a handy way to remember um, the types of errors, but it's important not to try and memorize this table, um, as people may rearrange the rows or columns and that will throw things off. This is more a helpful way of thinking through the concepts. So if our null hypothesis is true, but we end up rejecting it, we've made an error there. Okay. And that one we call a type 1 error. Okay. This gets other names as noted. You can refer to this as a false positive, or sometimes false rejection. And this here we denote with alpha, okay. alpha being the probability of making a type 1 error. Okay. You can notice this column here, these have to sum to 1. Right. In reality, the null is true. We're going to reject it or fail to reject it 100% of the time, right? when the null is true. So it's important to, I guess, first note that this cell of the table here is going to happen with probability 1 minus alpha. Okay. When the null is true and we fail to reject it, that's making a correct decision. Okay. And often, the names that this gets um, referred to as Sometimes the specificity. Okay. Or sometimes um, gets called a true um, negative. Right. We have a negative result. We fail to reject the null, and that's true or correct. Okay. Now, let's think about um, in the case where the alternative hypothesis is true. If the null is false and the alternative is true, and well, let's start here. So the alternative is true, but we fail to reject the null. Okay. There we've made an error. And again, that's what we call the type 2 error. Okay. This also goes by the name of false negative. Okay. And the probability of this happening, we're going to den denote with beta. Okay. And finally, this cell down here, when the alternative is true, and we reject the null, and we say we have evidence to believe the alternative is true, we've made the right decision there. As noted, the probability of this, 1 minus beta. Okay, and this gets a few different names. Um, most notably, power. Okay. So in a separate video, we're going to talk a lot more about power and how to calculate the power of a test. Okay. In uh, Medical setting, this also gets referred to as the sensitivity. Um, 
or sometimes as a true positive. So, as I said, we'll, we'll expand on these numerically in a separate video, but let's briefly talk about um, these here. So, the probability of making a type 1 error, we denote with alpha, and again, this we choose. Okay, so we choose our type 1 error rate. Often we use that um, alpha of 5%. Again, this came from Ronald Fisher um, throwing out a suggestion that um, making a false positive, okay, or a false rejection of a null 1 in 20 times was an acceptable rate. It's 5%. That number stuck. It's arbitrary, but a reasonable um, value. The probability of making a type 2 error, okay, this depends on a few things. This depends first on our alpha. As alpha goes up, beta goes down. As you want to make more false positives, you're going to make fewer false negatives. Or if you want to make fewer, um, fewer false positives, you're going to make more false negatives. Okay, there's a trade-off between type 1 and type 2 errors. Also, the sample size. As the sample size increases, the probability of making a type one, er I'm sorry, type two error decreases. Yep. And finally, what we're going to call the difference that we wish to detect. Okay, the difference that we wish to detect as this increases, okay, the probability of a type two error decreases. Okay. Right now, these are just things I've thrown out there. In the next video, we're going to expand a bit more on what do we mean by the difference we wish to detect. Um, and how do all these come into play with working out the type 2 error rate, or um, probably more importantly, the power. So I guess we can notice the power is 1 minus the type 2 error rate. Okay, so those are very much connected. And we'll work through that in a separate video. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Stick around, guys, because we got lots more. Statistics is hard to say, Poopali. No, it's not poopali.